I am X Charles. I'm the founder and CEO of Money Button. We recently launched a new product called Invisible Money Button that allows users to grant permission for applications to swipe Money Button on their behalf. The button is invisible, which is why we call it Invisible Money Button. And we give full control to the end user to uh, determine what permissions the applications have. Uh, including the ability to change the amount of money that you grant to a permission uh, and including the ability to remove permission from an application at any time. So what I want to do is demonstrate uh, uploading data to the blockchain during the coronavirus. So of course we have this global pandemic going on right now. I live in uh, San Francisco, California and we are current, like many people around the world right now, we are currently in lockdown and basically required to stay inside of our houses most of the time. We can go outside for exercise and we can go to the supermarket, uh, but unless you're someone that works for an essential service, and Money Button unfortunately is not regarded as an essential service, um, we have to stay home. Um, so I'm at home most of the time, um, but I thought it would be interesting to go out there, go for a walk, uh, get some exercise, and take some photos of these uh, uh, extremely unusual times and take photos of some of the unusual things that you can see in San Francisco right now and upload this to the blockchain. So I'm a sort of amateur journalist and I'm demonstrating how you can permanently record things on the blockchain. Because of course, one of the important properties of the blockchain is that when you record data on the blockchain, it's permanent and immutable. So it's a good way to, uh, to record history because you can know that if you record information on the blockchain, it can't be the case that it's just deleted or altered in the future. Um, that you have strong assurances over permanence or near permanence and very strong assurances over the immutability of the data. So it's a, it's a wonderful way to record history. So I'm gonna show you this website. So there's a website called bico.media, particularly ad.bico.media is the website that you want to be able to upload data. Um, it's created by someone named Matthias Wolf and he has integrated Invisible Money Button into the product to allow people to upload data. So I'm demoing a product that's primarily ad.bico.media, but it is powered by Invisible Money Button. And you're gonna see some of the uh, features of Invisible Money Button uh, using this application. So I've got some images here. I've, I've selected which ones I want to uh, upload. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, uh, I guess I'll go ahead and show you what these photos are first before I upload them. So here's an example of a, uh, uh, of a uh, merchant uh, in San Francisco right now. I'm uploading this photo because this is a restaurant, but look at how unusual the entrance to the restaurant is. We see things like stay six feet apart. We see signs like this everywhere. And we see that they seem to be selling alcohol at the storefront here. And what is normally a restaurant, like normally you'd go here to eat dinner, or they say brunch and dinner, they're now selling stuff outside. They've got a bunch of ads out here for things like coffee, espresso, Americano, all this stuff. So they sell coffee. They sell alcohol, 50% off alcohol. They say beers, wines, mimosa, Bloody Mary. And then you can pick up food. Uber Eat, DoorDash, Caviar can go over there. And they still have brunch and dinner to go. So they're, they've changed from being a normal sit-down restaurant into being some kind of food to-go place because that's allowed uh, during uh, this, this pandemic here in the city. So I'm going to uh, upload this photo to the blockchain. So let's see what happens here. So I simply drag the photo over here. And first it asks me to confirm that it's legal, which it is. Um, now, we can see what the permissions dialogue for Money Button looks like. Do you agree to let Ad Bico Media spend up to five USD from your balance? Well, I do agree. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and say, yes, I agree to let it uh, spend that money for my balance because it's going to use this to upload data to the blockchain. So I certainly agree to that. I'm gonna close your little warning there. It tells me that permission has been granted. That's wonderful. And now it begins to upload data. So what it's doing is it actually has taken the image that I dragged over here, broke it up into a bunch of pieces that are all 100 kilobytes in size. And each one of those, it's plugging into a new transaction and it's using invisible money button to build, sign, and broadcast each one of those transactions. After it's done with that, it accumulates them into a uh, transaction that contains basically a reference to all the other transactions. Um, so that's what it's doing right now. It's doing this automatically and it's using invisible money button behind the scenes. 
So while that's going, I want to show you some of the other uh, information we have. So we've got a, a, a couple of blog posts that I'm going to link to. Um, so uh, actually, let me show you the one that is for uh, end users first. So we have a blog post, Invisible Money Button, Give Apps Permission to Work for You, where we go through here and we explain what this is. We explain how there's a new permission system. The end user always has full control, so that you can see the window there. Um, of course, I decided to agree to that, but you don't have to agree to anything. Um, we allow the user to not only grant permissions, but actually to update and delete permissions. So you can actually change the permissions that you grant to applications. And there will be a re-granting dialog box if you wish to continue. You can remove permissions at any time as well by going into your settings. So I'll demonstrate these things in the application um, as we watch this thing gradually uh, broadcast uh, everything to the blockchain here. We have another blog post for developers. So the uh, if you're someone who is interested in building blockchain-based applications, you want to do something like write data to the blockchain or receive payments or send payments from one user to another or any sophisticated thing that you want to do with the Bitcoin SV blockchain, read this blog post explaining what is Invisible Money Button and how do you use this. Um, it explains the API, which is basically taking the API for normal money button, which appears on the screen uh, and allows you to now call a swipe method to swipe things automatically. Uh, and the API is extremely similar. So you pass in all the same options basically into invisible money button in order to swipe the button. Um, along with some other information here explaining the nature of how money button works, as well as what are some of the applications for invisible money button. So this makes it possible to make applications that are much more user friendly. Things like peer to peer messaging, you can press enter or click a button to send a payment. Social media, you can like stuff, post content. Um, payments, of course, you can do things like have a custom UI for a newspaper that lets you pay for a paywall or even make payments as you scroll. Gaming, you know, video games, you can uh, click around and t make actions that send money or receive money or write data to the blockchain. Um, and of course, you can, you can upload data and encrypt data and decrypt data. Um, okay, let's check out the status of this thing here. So we're currently at 59% uploading. Um, it takes a while just because we have to wait for each transaction. Uh, this can be sped up. I'm sure this will be sped up over time. Um, but it's a fairly large file, so it, it has to upload it in, in these pieces here. So it just sort of takes a while. Okay, so now what we can see has happened here is as I'm uploading this, this file, I've used the first five USD, five dollars that I gave permission to this application to spend. And so every increment of five dollars, it asks me, do I want to confirm? Well, I do want to confirm. I'm not going to, I'm not going to deny permission. I do agree to let it spend more money. Uh, that's the whole purpose of what I'm doing here. So it, it does cost money to write data to the blockchain. I'm writing uh, quite a lot of data here. Um, and so it costs money. Um, I'll just show you the size of these images that I want to upload are this one is 7.9 megabytes, the next one's 5.6 megabytes, the next one's 8.1 megabytes. So it does cost money and it costs about 0 0.5 Satoshis per byte as of this video, uh, which adds up to these images cost somewhere between $5 and $10 per image uh, to upload them to the blockchain. Of course, these are giant high resolution images. Um, smaller images uh, take less uh, data. Um, okay, so we've got these blog posts, which I'll link to, and I wanna show you some of the other information here. Um, it was roughly a year ago. You can see here, this was April 2, 2019. Currently, it's April 22nd, 2020. So a little more than a year ago, we had a few initiatives to start writing large amounts of data to the blockchain. Now, back then, the only way to upload data to the blockchain was to manually swipe money button over and over and over again, which is what people did. Um, so we had a few initiatives to try to uh, actually uh, uh, upload as much data as possible to the blockchain for fun to demonstrate blockchain history day. And we filled a number of record breaking blocks, including what was at the time the largest block ever at 128 megabytes. Um, so that was really fun. And so it's interesting to reflect on that and think how much better the user experience is now because now you don't have to manually swipe money button anymore uh, with invisible money button. Um, it's much simpler. You just drag the file in here and it just goes and you have to swipe occasionally to ratchet up your permission. Um, but uh, it's much easier. It's much more user friendly. 
So you can read this blog post and, and be reminded of a bit of history there. That was fun. We have a couple more on this. We have another announcement for when we had created what was before that one, the largest block in history, showing some of the images. Um, I created these myself and published some photos from San Francisco for people familiar with the area. This is Potrero Hill. Uh, that's the photos that I took at that time. Okay, so this first one here has finished. So I'm gonna open this up. It'll take a while to load the photo. Um, while that one's loading, I'm going to refresh and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna upload the next file. So we're gonna go ahead and drag the next image over here. I'll show you what this one is. Yes, all the content's good. It's totally legal. So let me show you uh, what this image is that we're uploading. So this one's interesting. Um, this is the Marina supermarket and I took this photo because although the sun isn't in a very good position, it's hard to see here, but if you look closely, you can see some people standing in line to enter the supermarket and several of them, if not all of them are wearing masks and they're all standing six feet away from one another. That has never happened before to my knowledge here. I mean, this is just an extremely weird set of circumstances and this is going on all over the world, but this is what it looks like in San Francisco at this supermarket as people have to wait in line to get inside, which by itself is unusual. And then they're standing six feet away from each other, which is unusual and they're wearing masks. That just isn't how this normally works. That's very weird. And so this is worthwhile to publish this to, to the blockchain and have a permanent record um, of this unusual situation. Um, so that's why we're uploading these photos. Okay, so that's that one. So that one's about 30% finished right now. So let's keep looking at the rest of my blog post here. Um, okay, so in addition to these records that we have of uh, the previous file uploads that we've done to the blockchain, um, we have this step-by-step uh, -step guide here. This is slightly out of date now because it's, it's now easier. The step-by-step -step guide tells you uh, all the steps to do to do this conveniently. Although we have solved many of the user experience problems of uploading data to the blockchain, we haven't solved every uh, user experience problem yet. So unfortunately, you do need to be aware of splitting your UTXOs. Currently, you can't just create a bunch of transactions in a row without running into an error. What you have to do is you have to spend a bunch of different transactions in parallel. We let you do this easily by splitting your UTXOs. And so we have a web page at moneybutton.com slash UTXO. If you come here and edit this value basically, set up something like 200 or 500 UTXOs and press swipe, I'm not gonna do this now because I'm in the middle of uploading data already and I've already uh, uh, split my UTXOs. But if you follow this first and just, you can read these step-by-step -step instructions. Um, although the fact that it tells you that you have to swipe a lot of buttons is no longer true because there's gonna be a whole lot less button swiping, but you follow the part that tells you to use the UTXO split tool, um, it will work and uh, you will be able to upload large amounts of data uh, without uh, encountering an error. Okay, as I go back up here to my file upload, I can see it needs me to reconfirm. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna demonstrate it, one of the features of uh, invisible money button. So this is money button asking me permission says, do you want to let this application spend up to five USD? So this is now it's, I have to reconfirm of course, but this time I'm going to reconfirm differently. I'm going to give it permission to spend up to 10 USD. So that way I don't have to uh, spend it quite so often. There's a bit of an error there with the way that input box works, but there I've fixed that. So I'm going to spend up to 10 USD from my balance and this will allow it to keep going for a little bit while longer. Uh, before I have to reauthorize permission. So permission granted again, and now it should resume. It's at 40%. Okay, now it started broadcasting transactions again. So now it's going again and uh, continuing to upload data there. Um, okay, so we've got these tools and these instructions that you can follow, um, including this one. This is, the other one is step-by-step -step instructions for uploading data, but the same, problem applies for any type of application where you basically create a lot of transactions quickly. So this blog post explains to you uh, what the split tool is all about and what's going on there. Um, and the other thing I want to show you is I'm, this is my money button settings page. And I'm gonna show you what it looks like. So you can see here apps and permissions. These are apps that I use. Um, this is a few of them that are already using invisible money button. And I can see in my permissions, I can open this up in a, in a detailed view here. 
and I can look at um, these apps and I can find add Bico Media. So there is the very app that I'm using right now. And I actually have the ability to remove permission. So if I wanted to, I can delete this. And I'm actually going to run an experiment where I do this. So I currently have, it's literally propagating right now. Let's see what happens when I delete permission. I'm going to remove permission from this app to continuing to swipe money button. Remove permission. Because why would I do this? Imagine I just don't like the app anymore and I want to make sure it can't spend my money. So I'm going to remove permission. Now I go back to the app as it's swiping here. Now, okay, that's interesting because I've removed permission. I now have to re-grant permission again. Well, of course, I was just running an experiment, so I'm going to go ahead and, and re-grant permission here. So let's go ahead and give it permission to spend more money. This time I'm typing in five US, uh, 50 USD uh, and let it go ahead and uh, swipe as much as it needs to to upload the rest of this data here. Okay, and if we're lucky, this is going to continue uh, uploading data, which it is. So you can see that the users have full control over the ability to control permissions for applications. I can re genuinely remove the a permission from this application to upload data at any time. Okay, so this particular file is almost finished here. There we go. Um, perfect, one more file. It takes a while for the backend uh, software here to load. We're going to do one more photo. Um, so let me refresh this page again. I'm going to drag the third photo in here. Yes, it's all good. Okay. Now that one's uploading too, so let me show you what is the third one. Uh, this photo is a photo of the Marina Green in San Francisco. And I thought this was very interesting, and it's also uh, somewhat uh, sort of symbolic of what's going on. Um, what this is is actually an outdoor exercise area. And you can see a sign in there that says it's closed. It's closed, and it says if you read the details, it's closed because of the coronavirus. And all of the uh, exercise facilities have been shut down. So the gyms are all closed because you get too close to people inside of a gym, and so you risk spreading the virus. Um, and so they've closed all the gyms. They've even closed all of the outdoor gyms. This is just a free outdoor gym. It's basically a park. But because they're afraid that people will get too close to each other, they'll be within six feet of one another at a gym, they even close the outdoor gyms. And you can see in the background here, this is sort of a beautiful park area. Um, there's a parking lot here, and actually the parking lot is closed. So what they're doing is, although the park itself, you can see the gym is closed, but that green area over there is not actually closed but they close the parking lot. So they make it really difficult for you to go there. Basically, they're making it so that although the park isn't strictly speaking closed, um, unless you live right there, it's too inconvenient to go there because where are you going to park? So although we have certain freedoms, um, people are extremely strongly discouraged uh, from going outside and from being near other people. Uh, through the measures that they're taking here. So I think that's worthwhile to upload that one to the blockchain. So I'm going to show you one more thing while this is finishing uh, uh, uploading here. So I'm going to go visit docs.moneybutton.com. So if you're a developer, you can find all of the documentation for MoneyButton at docs.moneybutton.com. We have all sorts of information here. Uh, the documentation for Money Button itself and the API, the REST API and OAuth API are all up here. We also have a lot of information about Paymail. Uh, this is a protocol for wallet interoperability. It's a naming and query system. Basically, it's like email for Bitcoin. And we have a bunch of specifications here for that. We also have a library that we maintain called BSV, which is a JavaScript Bitcoin library that's widely used uh, throughout the ecosystem. We have a bunch of documentation for that library as well. So all the money button documentation is here, including the documentation for invisible money button. So you can see we've got some really good detailed documentation here that explains if you're a developer, how to plug this into your application, use the moneybutton.js file as usual in your HTML or in your JavaScript application. And basically what you do is you create an invisible money button with a 
what we call client identifier, which is the identifier for your application. And once you do that, you can just start swiping the button, but the user will have to grant permission. So if the user has not already granted permission, they will be asked to do so. Um, but the API is extremely simple. You just call swipe with the same configuration options that you normally plug into Money Button. Via the swipe method, you have access to all of the usual features of Money Button, which includes not just making payments, but also performing cryptography like signatures, encryption, and decryption as well. All of that's made available through the Invisible Money Button API. Um, we give you certain features like uh, the ability to suggest an amount for the Invisible Money Button. So although the user fully controls the amount, we know that it's the application sometimes has a reason to suggest a particular value. You can also enforce a minimum value uh, in case you need a certain minimum amount, you have to require the user uh, choose that amount or nothing at all. Um, then there's also a token system and you have to pass in the token or get the token back. And when using Invisible Money Button, you must always use the correct domain name. So you must set the domain in your application and make sure you handle uh, this. And we've got tutorials on how to do all this stuff in, in example code. But there is a token that you get back and you have to use the token to continue to use the same permissions. Um, there's also the ability to query how much money there is left to be spent uh, with the invisible money button. If you want to, you can also ask for permission without causing, uh, without initiating a swipe and you can use the ask for permission API uh, for that. We also have some information on how to use uh, invisible money button well. Um, the Invisible Money Button gives a lot of responsibility on the application to provide a good user experience. So we encourage you to be very thoughtful that you are spending the user's money and they're trusting you up to a certain amount of money. You should put a lot of care into the user experience and be sure that uh, you are not uh, 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 confusing the user uh, throughout that experience. Okay, so this transaction is finished. Uh, going through here, this file has finished uploading. Um, I'm going to try to refresh all these images here. Let's see if they've if the caching has uh, finished here. Good. So here's the first image I've uploaded to the blockchain. Uh, the image of the restaurant that has been converted into a sort of uh, outdoor alcohol to go place. Uh, that's really interesting. The second image here. Here's the image of the Marina supermarket where people are standing in a line six foot away from one another wearing masks in order to get into the supermarket. And finally here, this one, because we only just uploaded it, it might take a few minutes to cache. I'll give it a couple seconds here or it might, uh, might fail. We'll have to load it later. Um, I think I'm not gonna wait for it. I'll just uh, conclude here as we're waiting for this image to finish uploading, or I should say sort of finish uh, 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 con being concatenated in this uh, uh, application's uh, infrastructure. Um, that is a overview of what it's like to upload data to the blockchain using Invisible Money Button and Bico.media. The file upload tool itself is Bico.media and in order to make this whole experience user-friendly, it's powered by Invisible Money Button. Um, so that's how you do it. I encourage you to take a look at the blog post if you're interested in doing this yourself and figuring out how to put uh, uh, sort of records of things permanently on the blockchain. Um, so that's all I have to say. Uh, thank you very much for, uh, for your interest in Money Button and an Invisible Money Button. And thank you to Matthias Wolf for creating this wonderful file upload tool using Invisible Money Button. And uh, I hope that you uh, value this, uh, this information and that you start uh, putting important information on the blockchain so that we can have a permanent immutable record of history um, for all time. All right. Thank you very much.